I made a free script for After Effects that lets you create complex follow rigs with any number of layers. Let me show you how it works. I broke up all this text into individual characters using split text, which is another one of my free scripts, and I arranged it in this nice, neat little grid using Gridlock, another free script. Both very valuable, huge time savers, but we're talking about Trailblazer here, and that's what I have docked right here. What Trailblazer is gonna let you do is choose a layer to be a leader and have lots of other layers follow it or mimic it. To start, I need to select the layer I want to be the leader, and then you shift click on all the other layers that you want to be followers. So whichever layer you select first, that's gonna be your leader. Then I'm just gonna click the button and Trailblazer is going to take a little bit of time to process. I have a lot of layers here that it has to do a bunch of calculations for all the transform properties, but before too long, it will start processing all of the layers and we'll be able to see that progress as it completes so that you know it's not just completely hung up. You can always hit escape to cancel, but once this is all done, it's going to give us some custom effects on the leader layer as well as the follower layer. And you're gonna see options for both in here. But let me show you what that rig just created for us. So I'm gonna add some position keyframes on this letter A. I'll go forward maybe 20 frames. I'm just gonna move it up to the top left and then I'll go 20 more frames forward and I'll bring it back to where it was. And then I'm gonna easy ease these position keyframes and you can already start to see what's happening up there. It's very, very cool what this rig allows us to do. But I'm gonna play this back now now, and you'll see that the A is leading the animation and all of the other letters are following. Whatever the leader layer does, all of the followers will do in sequence and we have some really great controls for customizing how all of those followers behave. So let's start at the top. We've got delay and this is measured in the delay units, which defaults to frames, but we could change this to seconds. So if I want it to take longer between each layer, I just bump that up to two frames and now that animation is gonna be offset two frames per layer. Or if I wanted to go faster, I could drop this down to 0.5. We can have fractions of frames. They don't have to be whole frames. So that's a really easy way to just tighten it up a little bit. But let's go back to one second and the next option is fall off. So I'm just gonna go to about the middle where we can see motion happening. And if I decrease this fall off, this is going to progressively offset each follower by a smaller amount of time. So the first few layers are going to have a close to one frame offset and everything after it is gonna be tighter. And this is pretty sensitive. You can crank this a lot further down and then things aren't going to be offset nearly as much. So that's what that looks like. We could also go in the opposite direction and have layers take progressively more time as the list goes on. And again, I have 26 layers, so this is compounding a lot by the time we get to the last letter. But that's how the fall off works. I'm gonna reset that back to 100 and let's take a look at the scale and rotation offsets. So this by default is just going to increase or decrease the scale progressively throughout your followers. So if you wanted to offset the scale very easily, that's how we can do it. The rotation works exactly the same way. It's going to rotate progressively more depending on how far off of that first follower layer you are. And that's it for the main controls, but then we have the follow properties section. And these are what control what the follower layers actually do. So we have position scale and rotation checked on by default. So if I go forward and then I add some scale keyframes, just scale it down to maybe 50 and then back up to 100, we're going to get a very similar animation, but on the scale instead of the position. So let me just ease this a little bit more strongly so we get something that looks a little more interesting. And then I'll just extend out my work area and we'll preview that. So the position finishes up and then the scale animation happens. So that's great. Let's also add in some rotation. I'll just go a full cycle forward, ease into these keyframes and do the same thing. Nice and strong ease. And now we're going to get this position, scale, and rotation animations. Again, all following an offset by this delay value. And the fall off affects all of those properties. So if I drop this down, that rotation is going to happen more quickly the further down the line we get. All right, let's undo that back to 100%. We can also enable this for opacity. So one example of when you might wanna do this is if you're trying to create like a flickering animation for the layers to appear. So let's just add a opacity keyframe. We'll start it at zero and then I'll go forward a couple of frames, increase it up to 100 and I'll just go back and forth over a few frames to create a flicker animation. And now the animation will play through in sequence throughout the entire animation. And text layers honestly aren't the best example of this since you can create this type of animation with text animators, but this applies to any type of layer, not just text layers.
But let's say that you wanted to randomize this a little bit. Let me move these keyframes to the start and then I'll grab all of these other transform keyframes and move them forward. Right now, what's determining this order of operations is on the follower layers themselves. There's a follower effect that has an index value. This is assigned to the layer at creation in the order that you selected the layer. So each one of these is going to have an index value, but we could randomize these values. If I make a selection of all of these follower layers, not the leader, and I alter option click on the button, it's going to randomize the index value, shuffle them all so that now it's completely randomized. It's going to flicker in randomly and all of the transform properties are going to have a random order. And you can randomize that as much as you want just by alter option clicking with those layers selected. It's always going to shuffle those properties around based on the layers you have selected and without repeating any of those index values. You can also change them manually if you really want to, but let's say you shuffle it up and now you want it to go back into order. Just select them in the order that you want them to be, shift click on the trailblazer button and it is reordered in the order that you chose. And in the same way, we could reverse the order by selecting the layers in a reverse order and then shift clicking. Again, remember this is just the follower layers I'm selecting, not the leader. So that gives you some really great controls for how this follow animation actually operates within your selected layers. Now, in addition to that index value, we also have this delay multiplier and influence. So let's go to this second letter. And if I increase this delay multiplier, it's going to offset its index value essentially pushing it further forward or back in time. So you can have this individual control in addition to the global control that we have from the delay value of the leader layer. We also have this influence slider. So if I turn the influence all the way down to zero, then it's going to be completely free. There's nothing holding it in place, allowing you to animate your objects at any point in your timeline separate from this rig, even if they are rigged. So you can keyframe this value for every individual follower layer, depending on how these objects need to move. Maybe they need to come in completely separately, but then they need to follow a leader and then they need to break off of that leader again. That's how you can do it. Now this entire time we've been using relative offset mode. If I go back to the effect for the leader, we can see there's a checkbox right here relative to leader. But if I switch over to this other comp where I have a pointer, I'm gonna make a bunch of copies of it. So let's just make a total of 10 copies. And the first one will be the leader. I'll shift click on the others and click on trailblazer. Now all of these layers were in the exact same place when I added them to trailblazer, but I still have the ability to move them around because of that relative to leader checkbox. But if I uncheck that, then all of the followers are going to go wherever this leader is. And let's add in some animation to show you what would happen when I move it around. So I'm just gonna add a position animation over a second from the top left to the bottom right. You can already see what's happening. Let's ease into these keyframes and I'll back this off so it's nice and strong into both of those keyframes. Let's add in some curves to the motion path. And you can see this is now creating a true follow rig. We're getting this really cool multiplication trail, but because it's offset by a whole frame, it basically looks just like an echo. So if I lower this delay a little bit to be a fraction of a frame, then it's gonna look like there's a lot more motion going on. And I think that looks pretty cool. Let's go back to the beginning just by looping this animation, copying and pasting that original keyframe, and we'll give it a little bit of a curve in the opposite direction. And then just ease into that keyframe as well. There we go. And now we're gonna have that pointer move around and we can play around with things like the fall off to have it not be completely linear throughout that motion. We could also scale everything down as we progressively get down the list. So maybe we wanna drop that down a little bit. To reverse the layer order, we can use another script that I have docked here in my code runner, which is called reverse layer order right here. So if I just select all of my layers and click this button, it's going to reverse the stacking order. Now that leader is on top of all of the followers. That also is a free script, by the way, you can find that in the description. But that's the difference between having relative to leader checked or unchecked. And playing around with these controls, you can just create some really fun, interesting looking animations really quickly. And keep in mind that anything with a stopwatch icon is keyframable. So if I wanted to start maybe my rotation offset at zero, but then by this point, have it switch to negative 180 degrees and then back to zero at the end, that's completely doable. So let's just add some easing into those keyframes and see what that looks like. 
Super fun, and the possibilities are pretty endless with this. Imagine applying this to illustrations of a deck of cards. You could do some really fun animations of the cards fanning out, change the delay, maybe it should be longer than a frame delay. It's completely up to you. Now, you can install Trailblazer as a script UI panel just like I have here. You'll just have to put it in the script UI panels folder for the version of After Effects that you're currently using. There are instructions on the product page if you've never installed a script in After Effects before. You'll just have to restart the program and you can find it in the window menu but you can also install it in a tool like Code Runner, which is a free script launcher that I created. You can find the download in the description, install it as a button and it works exactly the same. It'll just pop open the script interface so that you can do exactly the same thing as what you see here. It also works great with KBar or MoBar if you like to use either of those tools. I try to make my scripts flexible so that you can use them wherever it feels best for you in After Effects. You can find links to download those scripts in the description. And while you're on my website, make sure that you browse my other free tools as well as my paid courses in case you're interested in becoming a better motion designer. And if you have any feature requests or you run into any bugs for Trailblazer, definitely let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do about them. That's it for Trailblazer though. I hope you enjoy this tool. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one.